times 0.3, and that's the amount of revenue we're making, plus the original cost, 3820, is the 4966. So that would be, for this job, what we would charge if we had a 30% markup. The other way we can do it is we could say, okay, if it was 3820 times 100% is 1, 0 0.3, 130%, 1.3, 1 130%. And we'll get to that same 4966. So that's one way we can do it. Remember that these sheets here could look kind of like invoices if we're thinking about uh, billing the client on a construction or a project or any kind of custom project. They're not necessarily an invoice because this is tracking the cost. This gives us the cost. But that could be a starting point on which we derive our invoice. We might tell our clients exactly what it costs and then tell them that we're going to have a markup. That's a very nice, transparent way to, to present an invoice, but we might not do it that way. We might come up with a cost in some other, in other kind of format, an invoice in some other kind of way. But a construction job, often the invoice will be similar to this and many kind of, of custom jobs. You might use the actual costs as the jobs and then mark it up and be as, I think that's as transparent as you can be to, to basically do that. So if we did that for both of them, then we'd say, well, the two jobs add up to uh, 3820 plus the 2790. And between the two of them, we're going to have a 30% markup. So times 1.3, 130% is the 8593. So that's what we're going to have. So another way we can look at it is if we highlight this number and this number, 6610. Uh, that, of course, I'm going to scroll all the way to the left. Scrolling all the way to the left is this number. So I can just take that number, multiply it times a 30% markup. So we'll, we'll let's do that here. I'll be in G10 equals this 6610 uh, times 1.3, a 30% markup. So then the sales is going to be 8593. That's what we're going to invoice the client for in a credit of the same. So, so again, this whole problem, whenever you work these problems, we're always focused on inventory. And then this number kind of gets lost, even though that's usually the main thing we focus on when we sell merchandise and, and, and any kind of merchandise in manufacturing or, uh, or uh, non-manufacturing. But um, it gets lost when we, when we spend the whole time period focusing on tracking the costs. So, uh, and it could be derived from the cost, but it doesn't necessarily have to. All right, so let's post this out now. So here's gonna be our, our journal entry. And again, this journal entry, I'm gonna make it green uh, just so we can focus on one at a time. So I'll right click on it, make it green. Let's make it that green. So now I know which one I'm working on so I don't get mixed up. All right, so now we're gonna post this out. And these two should look familiar now because this is our normal kind of journal entries. The new thing is where do we get the numbers from the job cost sheets? All right, here's the accounts receivable. Here's the accounts receivable, our second favorite account. It's our second account on the GL. Here it is in 019. We're going to say equals point to that 8593. The 180 goes up by 8593 to 188,593. That then can be found on the trial balance. We're out of balance by the 8593. Then we're going to go to sales. That's going to be way down here on the income statement. Same order on the general ledger. So I'm going to go all the way to the right. So we're going to go to the right. Here's sales. It's going to be on the credit side. So I'm in AB13. AB13 equals, I'm going to scroll all the way to the left, and I'm going to pick up that green one we're working on, the sales item, and enter. So it goes from zero up in the credit direction by 8,593 to 8,593. And I'm going to, and that number, of course, is found on the trial balance. And that brings up net income. So we're back in balance. Net income is increased by that. So this isn't a loss. This is income. Credits are beating the debits. Revenue minus expenses. Credits minus the debits. Now we're going to record the other one. So I'm going to highlight these. I'm going to make them that blue again. Right click. Here's the bucket. I'm using that blue. If you can't find it there, it's in this little color wheel and then go to standard and it's that one right there and enter. 
And then this one's the last one, so I don't need to make it green because we're working on the last one. And then here's the cost of goods sold. So that's the first one we'll record. Cost of goods sold, last account, second to last account. So we're going to go all the way to the right. And we're going to be here in AA19. Going to say equals. Scroll to the left. Pick up that cost of goods sold and enter. So there it goes up from that 380 by 6, uh, 610 to 6990. That then is found on the trial balance. So now it went up by the 8690 and then, and then we had an expense of the inventory bringing the, the net income now at uh, the 1603. And then we'll record the cost of goods sold. So here's, the, I'm sorry, we just did that. Then we'll record the finished inventory. So here's inventory. Here's the finished goods inventory. So finished goods inventory is right there. So we'll be in cell T19. Within T19, we're going to say equals. Point to that 6610. It's going to bring the 8736 down by 66102 to 126. That then also found on the trial balance here puts us back in balance and there we have it so uh, that should be kind of like our normal uh, kind of sales journal entry when, whenever we sell merchandise now we need to go back and make sure that these accounts are are correct because remember we now did something to the finished goods account so uh, we're going to have to adjust our worksheet to make sure that this number should be supported in other words here's finished goods here it went down it's supported by the GL. We need to make sure it's supported by the worksheets, our jobs. So if we go back to the jobs, we're going to say, okay, these numbers are okay because we didn't do anything to work in process. So, so the work in process accounts, are the open ones, are still good. The finished goods, however, are not now because we changed the color, but not the formula. We've got to say, okay, these were adding up these three now the work in process i'm going to delete that or the i'm sorry the finished goods is only equal to this one that's the only one that's still finished enter these two yellow ones i'm not going to add up i mean we could add them up and say okay those add up to 6610 and if i go to the left that's what that's what's in or that's what we posted to cost to get sold but you'll note it, it won't always be exact because this is a temporary account and it's going to flow out to retained earnings. So, of course, over time, we're going to have, they're all going to be shipped at some point in time. And, uh, but they'll all be closed out to cost of goods sold and they'll all be closed out eventually to retained earnings. These two, of course, are on the balance sheet, which are permanent. And so, uh, we'll be able to tie these out. So these, these two, of course, are still work in process, which is supported by, this amount on the trial balance so if we go to the trial balance there's the work in process it's supported by the work in process gl as well as the jobs as long as we've got them properly allocated and then the closed jobs consist of just this one it's on uh the it's going to be on the gl so here's the gl and that gl account is supported not only by the uh the i'm sorry here's the trial balance it's supported not only by the gl but it's also supported by the jobs here and that's the one that hasn't been shipped and then these two are shipped and they're basically gone to the temporary account they're now on the income statement in the form of cost of goods sold